of the words our four-year-old daughter said during a family drive. I didn't miss my husband steal his face at that moment. However, whether he intended to play dumb or not, he, whose face was still pale, looked at our daughter through the rearview mirror with a frightened expression. What a scary thing to say. You shouldn't tell such lies. I glared sharply at him from the passenger seat. Then should we pull over at the rest area? It had been five years since we got married, and I had been diligently supporting him, who'd been busy with work. However, the truth was about to be exposed by my daughter's mysterious power. I, Charlotte Clark, married my husband, Freddie, when I was 27 years old, and he is four years older than me. The following year, our daughter Sophia was born, and she has been growing up healthy and lively. Now she's turned four years old. Our family was living busy yet happy days. How about going to the zoo next Sunday? Huh, yay, I want to see the giraffes. I couldn't help but smile at their cheerful conversation. My husband has always been kind since we were dating, and that hasn't changed since we got married and our daughter was born. On his days off, he willingly engages in family activities and is an impeccable father. I'm so glad I ended up with this man. I was indulging in happiness while watching my husband and daughter playing together. Little did I know that these peaceful days were about to come to an end. Huh, you're being transferred to a different department. Yeah, it's company policy. They want me to gain experience in various places. One day, as soon as Freddy came home, he sighed wearily with a dejected look on his face. Unfortunately, it seemed he was being transferred to the busiest department, which meant he might not be able to spend much time with us. Daddy, are you not going to play with me anymore? I'll do my best to spend as much time with you as possible, Sophia. Let's go to the zoo again sometime. My husband wore a regretful expression as he gently stroked our anxious daughter's head. Watching the two of them, I felt a tightness in my chest, overwhelmed with emotions. It seems his transfer doesn't involve changes in salary or relocation, but it's still big news for our family. Just the thought of having less family time together made me feel lonely. However, the one feeling the most vulnerable is surely Freddy adjusting to his new environment. Please don't push yourself too hard. I knew he had a tendency to immerse himself deeply in things. That's why I worried about him overdoing it. But unfortunately, my concerns turned out to be justified. Initially, Freddie managed to secure time for family and rest despite being busy. However, about a month later, his time at home suddenly decreased dramatically. It seems he's working overtime, often coming home late at night after our daughter has already gone to bed. He's been going out for drinks with his clients more often, and to top it off, he started going to work even on his days off. And there was another concern I had about him. Hey, can you take a day off next Sunday? Sophia misses you, and you've been working too hard lately. Huh, who do you think I'm working so hard for? So should I just turn down client meetings and risk getting fired? I didn't mean it like that. I'm just worried about you. That's none of your business. Anyway, make sure you have money ready for next week's drinking party. Seemingly overwhelmed by his workload, my husband had become irritable all the time and started taking out his frustrations on me more frequently. Furthermore, he was spending extravagantly, claiming it was necessary for entertaining clients, and this was starting to impact our living expenses. Because I knew of his previous kindness, I was more worried than frustrated about his current tense demeanor. I really needed to find a way to get him to take a break, or he was going to collapse from overwork. After half a year had passed since the transfer, my husband had reached a point where he was coming home mostly just to sleep. In addition, Sophia, feeling lonely from not being able to see him, began to wear a sad expression more often. I knew things couldn't go on like this, 
so I was trying to figure out a way for him to take a break. However, as if to thwart my efforts, more bad things kept happening. My mother, who had been suffering from an illness for several years, suddenly passed away in the hospital. No, Mom. My father had passed away when I was young, and my mother was my only parent. I couldn't even have a proper conversation with her before she passed away. When I heard the news while at home, I was so shocked that I couldn't move for a while. However, Freddie's response to me was unbelievably cold. Hey, do I have to go to that funeral too? His indifferent attitude shocked me, and I widened my eyes in disbelief. For my husband, the relationship with my mother-in-law may have been somewhat distant, but she was still family. Despite this, he didn't show any sadness or comfort me. Instead, he just complained about having to attend the funeral. What are you saying? Of course you have to. It's a family funeral. Don't get mad at me. Uh, why does this have to happen now? I had plans too. Despite my reprimand, Freddie showed no signs of remorse, and I was left shocked. In the past, he would have surely comforted me, perhaps rubbing my back and grieving with me together. But now, as he sighed in dissatisfaction, he seemed nothing like the person I once promised a future with. Naturally, he didn't help with any preparations for my mother's funeral, and I arranged everything alone. On the day of the service, my husband remained silent sullenly. It's over now, right? I'm heading home first. After the funeral ended, Freddie didn't help with any cleanup and quickly went home. I was initially confused by his first reactions, but by then I had lost the energy to be angry. I was simply bewildered and disappointed in him. No matter how busy and stressed from work he may be, his behavior at the funeral was unacceptable. When did my husband become such a cold person? Mom, Sophia will help you. Despite feeling frustrated with him, I finished cleaning up with my daughter by my side. Before heading home, I decided to stop by my parents' house for a short while. It wasn't far from our home, and I wanted to reminisce about my mother after saying goodbye. Although I did it as my heart dictated, the decision wasn't wrong. When I arrived at my parents' house with a heavy heart, I discovered something shocking. Mom, wait a moment, huh? Sophia, as soon as we arrived at my parents' house, my daughter's expression suddenly changed, and she dashed straight into the back room. I had taken her to visit my mother's place several times before, but I had never seen her behave like this. Hurrying to follow her, I found Sophia opening the second drawer from the bottom of the dresser as if she was drawn to it by something. Mom, Grandma wants you to have this. As I looked at an old hand mirror, which my daughter was holding, I couldn't help but catch my breath. The mirror had always been precious to my mother, but she had treasured it so much that even I rarely saw her use it. I didn't even know where she kept it. Of course, there's no way Sophia could have known about the existence of this hand mirror. What? How did you know it was here? And what do you mean Grandma wanted me to have it? When Grandma was sleeping earlier, she told me that mom was sad and asked me to give this to you. I couldn't hide my surprise as she answered innocently. I didn't think it was a coincidence, so I asked her some questions. I asked about tomorrow's dinner menu, what I was thinking about, and even thoughts I had during the funeral, all things she couldn't possibly know. Yet, to my surprise, she accurately answered every question. I'm not sure how long she has had it, but it seems like my daughter has a mysterious ability to know what people are thinking. Wow, that's amazing, Sophia. You know everything. I said as I stroked her head, feeling bewildered. I had always thought that the idea of mysterious abilities was just something from stories, but I never imagined she actually had such a power. Well, I was surprised, she put her hand on her hip and showed a proud look on her face. That's right, Sophia knows about dad too. What do you mean? 
What she told me was incredibly unbelievable and unforgivable. A few weeks after my mother's funeral, I mentioned to Freddie, by the way, I'm visiting my friend with Sophia next Sunday in the morning. Freddie, who was about to leave for work, abruptly stopped and frowned, looking genuinely troubled. Really? Oh no, I'm off that day. That's too bad. Feeling the artificiality in his voice, I quietly let out a smile so as not to give myself away. Now that I knew the truth, there was no love left for Freddie inside me. On that Sunday, I left home with Sophia, then killed about an hour and returned home. Dad, he's over there. I looked where she pointed and headed towards the garage with the shutter still down. After taking a deep breath, I lightly knocked on the shutter. Freddy, I know you're in there. Open it. Ha, huh, Charlotte, I thought you and Sophia had plans. It's canceled. If you're going somewhere, we want to come with you. He sounded flustered and hesitant to open the shutter. Honestly, I had a pretty good idea of what was going on inside of that moment, but I decided to stay quiet and just observe. Sophia wants to go for a drive, too. Unable to resist her hopeful voice, he had no choice but to agree. A few minutes later, Freddie reluctantly opened the garage and started our drive together. Sitting in the passenger seat, I looked at Freddie, who was driving in profile, and I solidified my final decision. The married life with Freddie had truly been enjoyable and happy, but I also firmly understood that those days would never come back. Hey, did you know Sophia has a special power? I finally brought it up as we merged onto the highway. My husband furrowed his brows in confusion at the sudden confession. Huh, what's that supposed to mean? That's a silly joke. He laughed dismissively. Daddy, the girl in the trunk is asking you to let her out. Our daughter confidently raised her voice from the back seat. I didn't miss my husband's face go pale at that moment. Whether he intended to play dumb or not, he looked at our daughter through the rearview mirror with a frightened expression. Husband, what a scary thing to. Say you shouldn't tell such lies, but it's true. Then should we pull over at the rest area? When I suggested it on behalf of our daughter, who was hanging head down, Freddie immediately looked at me with a startled expression. Huh, we don't need to do that. It's just a kid's joke. Sophia has a mysterious power, you know. Besides, it's hot today, so it could be dangerous. If someone's really in there, he must have thought what I said made sense. After Freddy flinched and stiffened, he headed towards the rest area with a contorted expression on his face. Upon arrival, we left our daughter in the air-conditioned car and went outside to check the trunk. I don't think there's anything in there. Come on, quickly. When I said a word to my husband, who had begun to hesitate at this point, he seemed to realize he couldn't escape anymore and nervously opened the trunk breaking into a cold sweat. In the next moment, someone jumped out from there. I knew you were cheating, I said. It was a young woman whose face flushed red from the heat. Yes, it turned out that while Sophie and I were out, Freddie had been cheating with her at home. Probably just as they were about to go for a drive, we came back unexpectedly, so he had no choice but to hide her there. He shook his head nervously at the woman who was taken away suddenly and seemed unable to grasp the situation. No, it's not like that. She is a colleague from work. Um, we were just working together. Wow, at the new apartment. You're doing a job getting into a trunk. I chuckled at the blatant and ridiculous lie while standing firm and taking a piece of copy paper from my bag. And what is this? I asked, holding up the paper. It said, let's go on a drive date on Sunday. As the woman and Freddie looked at the paper, they turned pale. That was no surprise, as their lovey-dovey email exchanges were printed on it. Thanks to Sophia, I found out everything. On the day of my mother's funeral at my parents' house, my daughter confided in me, 
Daddy has been spending a lot of time with Scarlet lately. I'm sad because Scarlet is taking Daddy away from me. Just having witnessed her power, what she said made me suspicious. So I decided to investigate my husband for a while. After that, I found undeniable evidence of his affair on his phone. So I told you that fake plan because I wanted to punish you. It's a shame it turned into this kind of drive. Hey, it's unfair to look through my phone without. Permission. Freddy protested, shaking his body in response to my sarcastic words. His absurd remark unintentionally made me burst into laughter. I had thought he was just getting too busy to come home, but most likely, during that time, he was with his affair partner, Scarlett. He probably used the expenses repeatedly for dates with her, despite all the complaints and taking it out on me. Who exactly is being unfair here? By the way, I've been recording everything since earlier. Recalling all the numerous grievances, I took out my phone from my breast pocket. Actually, I had expected this would happen, so I secretly pressed the record button on my phone to capture evidence. Since we got into the car, any evidence I've gathered isn't just messages in this video. I didn't tell you, but I also had hidden cameras in the house and garage. And Scarlett, I know everything about you too. Under my successive attacks, they both turned white as sheets. I was furious with Freddy, but of course, I couldn't forgive Scarlett either. So I thoroughly investigated my husband and managed to identify her. She was a 25-year-old new employee who had become his colleague in a new department. From reading the messages, it seemed she was aware of my existence, yet still engaged in the affair, so she's equally guilty. Oh, uh, sorry, Charlotte, he stammered. He probably didn't expect to be cornered this much. Perfectly feeling disdain for Freddy as he whimpered and pleaded in a voice I had never heard before, I glared at both of them with all my anger. I won't forgive either of you. Prepare yourselves for alimony. Upon hearing my firm words, perhaps realizing their fate, both of them collapsed to their knees. Afterwards, I divorced Freddy. The fact that I had recorded the scene and gathered all the evidence paid off, and they were ordered to pay $300,000 in compensation. I was also able to claim $500 a month in child support from my husband. Their misfortune didn't end there. I heard that their affair spread throughout the entire company since they were working in the same department, which made things awkward and eventually led to their breakup. They were both looked at with disapproval by their colleagues and eventually had no choice but to resign. Now it seems they ended up in the street with the burden of the compensation payments. Meanwhile, I am now enjoying peaceful days with Sophia. I'll continue to give lots of love to Sophia, who has a wonderful power, so that she can live happily in the future.